There is some debate about who invented tapping on the guitar. Some say musicians from the 18th century used tapping on their medieval stringed instruments. Unfortunately, there's no way to know that for sure. If you don't know, tapping is essentially hammer-ons and pull-offs. But instead of just using your fretting hand to do those techniques, you're essentially taking the four fretting fingers of your fretting hand and adding four more. <laughs> The first guitar player to use tapping was possibly Jimmy Webster, who made recordings in the 1950s using a two-handed tapping method he described in Touch Method for electric and amplified Spanish guitar. But according to the guitar player George Lynch, the guitar player George Van Epps was the first to use tapping in the early 1950s. The first documented performance of tapping on the guitar that I could find was by Vittorio Camerdesi in 1965. <laughs> That sort of tapping is definitely more compositional and something I see in bass players more than guitar players. In fact, the only guitar player I can think of that taps just like that would be Joe Satriani. Richie Blackmore claimed that the guitarist Harvey Mandel of the band Canned Heat used tapping in a performance in 1968. However, he could have confused that guitar player with another guitar player named Randy Resnick, who was the guitar player in a band called Pure Food and Drug Act, which played multiple supporting gigs with Canned Heat. Now, Randy's name came up multiple times in my research, and he was said to have used tapping during performances and recordings as early as 1969. I think he could have developed a tapping style due to the influence of the band leader, Don Sugarcane Harris. His band Pure Food and Drug Act would take extended solos and Sugarcane's blues, jazz, violin style sounded a lot like tapping might sound on a guitar. So I bet you 10 vintage Les Pauls that had something to do with it. Now while I believe everything I've said up to this point is true, it's all hearsay. There's no actual proof or evidence of any tapping in a rock context that I could find before 1971. I listened to basically a 17 minute guitar solo between Randy Resnick and Harvey Mandel, and I couldn't find one instance of tapping in that entire performance. There was a lot of blues licks though. In 1971, a UK guitar player named Steve Hackett, the guitar player for Genesis, was learning Toccata and Fugue, a piece by Bach. You know, that song that goes like, -na -na. Steve decided it was easiest to play a certain section of that song on one string. As far as musical evidence goes, we can hear a little bit of tapping in the 1971 song by Genesis called The Musical Box. And now we come to Eddie Van Halen. This is where the origin of tapping changes. While Eddie didn't invent the concept of tapping, he certainly took the concept and mutated it into something accessible the world over. It wasn't always that way, though. Van Halen would famously perform with his back to the crowd during his tapping runs, masking his technique from onlookers and further adding to the mystique of the sound. I mean, imagine thinking you know the sound of a guitar and then seeing and hearing something like this. I mean, I think it's a synthesizer or some other kind of trick. There's no way a person could play guitar that fast. Of course, now we know the truth. So the real question is this, how did Eddie develop this tapping technique? Did he steal it from any of the aforementioned guitar players? First of all, using the word steal is incorrect. You can steal a guitar. You can't steal a guitar technique. Techniques are free for everyone to use and innovate. Your greatness is what dictates a technique's effectiveness. But still, for some reason, people get offended when credit isn't given where it's due. But this isn't a debate, remember. It's an origin story. I'm not aware anyone was doing it before me. I was using that technique in 1971, and I think um, Eddie Van Halen acknowledges uh, my influence. Oh, Eddie Van Halen didn't invent tapping and, and pull hammer-ons and pull-offs and this and that. And I never claimed that I did, but I do know how and when I figured out how to do it. <laughs> 
And on top of that, I never really heard anybody do with it what I did. According to Eddie himself, in 1975, he saw Jimmy Page playing the Heartbreaker solo. He saw Page moving both his hands to the guitar neck. He wasn't yet tapping, however. He was using two hands on the guitar neck, though, and he was doing something new. This is where Eddie claims to have found his inspiration to try tapping in his own way. Eddie Van Halen said something really poignant in an interview. He said, prior to himself, tapping was only a showmanship move. It was used in fragments. It was not used as a compositional tool. It wasn't used to make pieces of music. This is why Eddie Van Halen is and always will be the king of tapping. He is the innovator, not inventor, the innovator of the technique. Randy Rhodes, Steve Vai, Michelangelo Badio, Paul Gilbert, Nuno Betancourt, all the way up to young artists today like Animals as Leaders and Polyphia. These people and countless more are all products of Eddie Van Halen furiously tapping on his fretboard. And personally, I'm forever grateful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your viewership and support. And until next time, keep shredding, or should I say, keep tapping.